Hello, everyone. Welcome to the New Jersey Association of College Admission Counseling's STEM Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us today. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your cameras and microphones are off, so the panelists can't see or hear you. So just uh, sit back and relax and uh, absorb all the great information you're going to get over the next 45 minutes or so. This is just one of many different sessions happening. Be sure to sign up for additional ones where you signed up for this one. And this presentation is being recorded. It'll be available within about a week, again, at the same website where you registered for this session. Top of the screen, upper left, those we're in session A1. So those are the six schools that will be presenting this afternoon slash evening. I've gotten the housekeeping stuff out of the way, so I will step out of the way and I'll turn it over to our first presentation from the representative from Stevenson University. Good afternoon, everyone. Just getting my screen uh, set up for sharing. My name is Megumi Gomio. I am a senior admissions counselor at Stevenson University. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, you can feel free to screenshot any of the slides, any of the information I am presenting so that way you can reference it later on. So here are a few fast facts about us to get you a little bit more familiar. We are located in Owings Mills, Maryland, which is a suburb of Baltimore City. Um, we're about 30 minutes from downtown Baltimore and about an hour north from Washington, DC. Um, our location and proximity to these areas makes us really great um, because it's super easy for students to find internship and career opportunities. Um, we're also a great fit for those of you looking to go out of state for school, but not be too far away from home. We average at about 17 students per class, so we are considered a small university. Um, your professors will get to know you as individuals, which is super beneficial, especially if you know that you thrive in smaller environments. And one of the most unique things about Stevenson is our connection to career. All of our majors require that students get some kind of hands-on experience in whatever it is that they intend to pursue later on in life. And we offer over 90 different majors, minors, and tracks to choose from. Um, and I'll talk more about our STEM field majors on the next slide. So you can see here, we offer a variety of different majors for students to choose from, ranging from cybersecurity and digital forensics to biomedical engineering to nursing, which is our most popular program by far. It is a direct entry nursing program, just in case there's anyone out there who is interested. Um, so you can see there's a lot of different programs to choose from. Pursuing STEM at Stevenson um, really affords students a lot of um, wonderful opportunities, um, including study abroad and study away programs. You can see here a few of the places that students have gone. It's definitely not limited to these. Um, we offer pre-professional advising for those of you interested in things like pre-med, pre-PT, areas like that. Um, if you pursue a pre-health track, you also get a pre-health advisor um, and they will assist you in the process of preparing for whatever field it is that you intend to pursue like medical school or PT school. Um, like I said before, we require that students complete some kind of internship or hands-on experience. So we have a lot of different opportunities there. Um, students can intern in, at places like the Johns Hopkins Hospital, the Center for Disease Control, different zoos, sports medicine clinics, just to name a few. Um, on campus, we have state-of-the-art research labs and facilities, as well as over 30 acres of watershed land and forest for students to use for their field work, as well as an on-campus greenhouse. Um, you can complete independent research with a faculty mentor, and this can be either paid um, or completed for class credit. And we also offer bachelor's to master's programs. Um, at Stevenson, we have a lot of different ones. We have a lot of forensics programs, which are very popular, um, as well as we have articulation agreements with other universities that offer a variety of options like preferred consideration and early acceptance. And finally, there are multiple different ways to get involved on campus related to the STEM fields. We have our pre-health student union, various honor societies, our forensic science club, and the environmental club. Again, just to name a few. These are definitely not the only options. So this is how you can apply to become a Stevenson Mustang. Um, you can apply using our website or the Common App. Either way you apply, it is free. We waive the application fee. We need your official high school transcript, your essay, and then the short response, which is specific to Stevenson. Um, we operated on a test blind policy for fall 2021 applicants. Um, we have yet to release an official decision, but it is looking like we will be test blind for fall 2022 as well. And you can stay up to date with our application policies on our website at stevenson.edu apply. 
So you'll see here we offer a variety of different scholarships. I won't get into all of them. Just know that we offer merit-based scholarships that are automatic consideration. They range from $10,000 per year to $20,000, $20,800 per year. Um, and again, they require no separate application. Um, when you apply, that's your application for the award and you'll know in your acceptance letter. The rest of these require some form of a separate application. Um, and you'll see here they have different requirements. All of these, with the exception of our theater and visual arts scholarships, are open to STEM majors. So these are all of our important deadlines. Um, we operate on a rolling admissions calendar. We do not have early action or early decision. Um, so from when our app opens on August 1st, right up until the end of the year, we are accepting um, applications. So if there are any seniors out there still looking to apply, so you wanna add another school to your list, um, there is still time to apply to Stevenson. Um, so you'll see here our deadlines revolve around scholarships and financial aid. Um, and from the time that you apply and submit all your necessary application materials, it takes us on average three weeks to get back to you with a decision. So the earlier you apply, the earlier you hear back from us. I do want to mention our different um, visit options. We have in-person campus visits if you are comfortable with making the trek to campus. Um, we also have virtual information sessions, workshops, open houses. We do have our next virtual preview day on March 17th. Very easy to remember, it's St. Patrick's Day. So you were green for St. Patrick's Day, you were green for Stevenson. Um, and so those are all of our different options. You can learn more on our website. So thank you again for tuning in today. If you have any questions, you can feel free to contact me either through email or by phone and you can follow us on Instagram to stay connected. Thanks again. Thank you very much. And I wanna remind all of our attendees that if you have questions for any of our presenters at any time, use the Q&A button that you can find probably on the bottom of your screen, but it does depend on your layout. Uh, just make sure that if your question is for a specific school, make sure to name the school in your question so they know it is for them. Up next, we'll hear from the representatives from Widener University. Thank you very much. Uh, I just shared my screen. Um, my name is Ryan McNone. I'm one of the uh, assistant directors here at Widener University. Uh, I have a, a screen share and I also, also have a special guest uh, with me, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, her name is Emily Isley. She's a junior biomedical uh, en engineering major. But I just wanna go through a few slides and then we'll get to Emily, the, the main star of the show. Uh, again, Widener is in Chester, Pennsylvania, um, just outside Philadelphia. We're a fairly small university, uh, about 3000 undergraduate students. Our average class size is 25 students. Majority of our faculty have their doctorate um, and we do not use teaching assistants. We have many STEM majors. Uh, as I mentioned, Emily's in biomedical engineering. Other majors in engineering include uh, robotics, uh, chemical, civil, electrical, mechanical. Uh, we also have a lot of areas of sciences, uh, biology, chemistry, biochemistry, physics, also uh, green chemistry, which is a new major and environmental science. Let me get to my next slide. As I mentioned, uh, our location, if you're not familiar with Widener, we're in Chester, Pennsylvania, just uh, south of Philadelphia. Um, real close to New Jersey, South Jersey, and depending on where you're coming from in New Jersey. We're still accepting applications for this fall. So uh, we encourage seniors to still apply. We're on rolling admissions for our juniors in the room. The app will open up August 1st. So um, you can apply them. We, we accept applications via uh, Widener's app or the Common app as well. Um, and then we do offer merit-based scholarships based on your grades, uh, SAT or SA. Widener is test optional and will be test optional also for fall 2022. Uh, let's see what else is here. We do offer a virtual tour. Um, you can check that out as well. I put in the chat, uh, we do offer other visit options as well. Uh, we do offer daily visits. So you can come see us during the week. Uh, and we will have other events uh, in the spring and summer and next fall open houses and other uh, preview days coming up. So check out our website for those opportunities. But uh, I want to introduce Emily again. Emily, uh, if you want to just explain uh, again your major and where you're from and uh, why you chose Widener. Yeah, so hi everyone. My name is Emily. I'm, as Ryan said, a junior biomedical engineering major with a Spanish minor. I'm originally from South Jersey. I live in Galloway and now I actually live near Widener's campus. And the reason that I chose Widener was honestly because it was the best opportunity for me knowing that I wanted to get into engineering and I wanted to play soccer. 
This school really allows me to do all the extracurriculars I want to do. Being an athlete and a student at the same time is difficult, but having a school that really appreciates athletics where the professors are super understanding of your athletic commitment, but then also our coaches are super understanding of our academics, which I really, really appreciate about Widener. And uh, Emily, you, you do uh, work with the charter school, is that correct too? You, you uh, work with their STEM club? Yeah, so another extracurricular I do actually is a volunteer scholarship program. So I actually started a STEM club at one of the local charter schools. So I work with middle school, middle school students a few nights a week and we just do different STEM activities. And then of course I'm getting a scholarship for volunteering, but it was just a nice way to implement STEM in our community and with like the younger generations and then kind of connecting Widener to our community. So we're trying to host a STEM fair at Widener. We're trying to get the students really involved with our faculty here. Do you think it's hard to be involved as an athlete and engineering student? Or, or, or you're obviously able to do it. Can you explain how you juggle all that? Yeah, it's definitely challenging. Um, you don't have as much free time as others may have, but I love being busy. It's super manageable. Sometimes I may have to miss a lab for a game and then I actually end up getting to make up the lab with a one-on-one -on -one with my professor, which is an awesome experience too, since you're really getting that hands-on opportunity and you're getting to know your professor as well. And then in the other way around, my coaches are super understanding. If I have to miss a practice here and there because something important comes up, I have a testing period for my class or something like that. So there's never really been conflicts. It's just all been resolved and I'm able to balance it all. Uh, talk to me about the uh, Kirkbride, um, the labs, you know, are, are you in labs a lot or, or take me in, into that, uh, that building? Yeah, so Kirkbride is actually the building right behind me. So that's our science and engineering building. Um, you do have like the general labs, chem lab, physics labs, those kind of labs your freshman and sophomore year. The chem labs are really, really neat. It's like similar to high school, but just a little bumped up. It's really fun. And then I'm now into my specific biomedical engineering labs where we work with force plate data, EKG, EMG. We're working on mechanical testing right now. So we're actually crushing rat bones, which is really cool. So lots of opportunities there with our labs. And I guess, like, what do you encourage, you know, juniors or seniors to do? Um, I guess visiting is, is very important. Is that what you recommend, you know, trying to make their decision? Yeah, I definitely recommend visiting. I feel like you don't truly get to know a school until you actually are there. And I'm obviously a tour guide. So I definitely enjoy walking the students around, letting them get a feel for the campus, even though it's different for all of us right now during the time of COVID, but at least you still get to see campus. We're up and running in a hybrid schedule. So we have a lot of students all around still. So campus still feels pretty lively. And I feel like that's the best way to really get to know if that's the best school for you. Well, thank you for your time. Um, just a couple of other pieces that, that I did mention, I'm gonna put in the chat, uh, my contact information. Um, if you have any questions for me, but I think we're out of time, but thank you, Emily. Um, again, thank you for joining us this afternoon and uh, to all the guests, thank you again, but take care. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. Thank you both. And I will remind everyone that if you have questions for any of our presenters, just use the Q&A button to ask those questions. If it's for a specific school, make sure to name the school when you ask your question so they know it's for them. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from Ryder University. Hi, good evening. My name is Susan Mikowski. I am the Director of Undergraduate and Transfer Admission at Ryder University, and I'm thrilled that y'all are joining us this evening. Um, just to give you some basic information about Ryder, um, as you can see on the map, we are in the center of New Jersey. So we are a small private liberal arts school, um, approximately 15 minutes from downtown Princeton, 15 minutes from the New Jersey State Capitol, an hour outside of New York City and about 45 minutes from Philadelphia. We are home to just under 4,000 students. So we are a small to medium sized institution. Um, and I think what really sets us apart on occasion is the fact that it is a community atmosphere. So our students are names and faces, um, particularly in the sciences, they are working directly with the faculty. We do not use teaching assistants. We do not use graduate assistants at the institution. Um, so our students are really going to be known by the faculty that are teaching them. The average class size at the institution is about 21 and the student to teacher ratio is 10 to one. So again, a nice small atmosphere where you will be known um, and can work directly with the folks that are gonna help you through your coursework, but then eventually with um, graduate school or pre-professional programs or full-time employment. 
We do offer um, approximately 70 majors of study at the institution. Um, and so this will take you through all of those programs, everything from business to our education uh, majors, to the arts, and then of course, liberal arts and sciences. But for this evening, these are the STEM majors that are offered at the institution. So you will see um, there's a wide variety of opportunities as well as those pre-professional programs that I mentioned. So students looking to go on and consider med school, dental school, um, the allied health fields, uh, we are able to assist you in pursuing those dreams. We also have a master's of science in athletic training, which is a guaranteed program through Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia. Um, so students considering that field tend to study our exercise science uh, program and then move forward to their master's degree. Um, we are currently expanding our science building because we are going to be expanding our STEM majors. So construction began um, recently and um, we're excited to see how that will finish in the next year. So things to come, we're hoping for things in more of the AI, um, robotics, uh, things of that nature. So be on the lookout for additional um, opportunities in the STEM fields at the institution. Some of the things that make STEM unique at Rider are listed here. So again, because this is a quick evening, um, you'll get some of those basic internship opportunities, but of course the website has more. And when visiting, you'll hear more from our current students in the STEM majors. Um, our students are doing research as early as their freshman year. So students would have that opportunity to get involved in the, um, in the labs with faculty, one-on-one -on -one research opportunities. We also have a ton of field work um, opportunities or study abroad um, choices, whether that's for a full semester or just um, a short 10 day, 12 day trip. Um, and when the world returns back to normal, we look forward to more of our students being able to do that. And then of course, our recent graduates are going on, as I mentioned, to do um, their graduate work or they're going into um, those pre-professional programs or perhaps they're getting right into the job market um, and then maybe going back and of course, getting that further degree that they were looking for. But they are assisted through this entire process. So whether it's through the faculty that they're connecting with, the mentors that they have from upper class students, um, or mentors that they've made in their internships and field experiences. Um, and because of our location in a suburban neighborhood, we actually are 15 minutes from three major hospitals, um, as well as all the fun stuff that students are looking for. So 15 minutes from um, the mall, the movie theater, the chain restaurants, and we are an active campus. Um, so our students are involved in anywhere from 150 clubs and organizations to, um, to sororities and fraternities, uh, to our three tiers of athletics. We are a division one university, as well as we have club teams and intramural teams. So how do you get to that opportunity of considering Rider? Well, the deadlines are listed there. We're a rolling admissions school and we are still accepting applications for the fall 2021 semester. So for any seniors in the room, feel free to apply. Um, and we do offer early action. So for juniors, if you're looking to get a decision early, I do recommend early action. As far as the application components, we are a test optional institution and we have been for years. So you can certainly feel free and comfortable to know that you can apply test optional with us. Um, we, we've been doing that for many years and are quite comfortable. The average student that's admitted based off the criteria that they submit of their transcript, uh, letters of recommendation and essay is about a high B plus student around a 3.4 GPA. And if submitting test scores, that is likely where they would fall around an 1100 or an ACT of a 23. When applying to the institution, you will be reviewed for scholarship automatically, as you've heard this evening from other schools. And this is what our current students that are applying for fall 2021 are qualifying for. Those, of course, may change for the students coming afterwards, but this at least gives you an idea. We do offer 10 full tuition academic scholarships every year, so definitely something to consider, um, as well as there is scholarship for athletics, for um, a legacy connection or a current sibling. Uh, we have community service scholarship. We have a women's leadership scholarship. And if you, for some reason, are thinking maybe business in addition to the sciences, we have a full tuition business scholarship. And this year, we have our Lifting Barriers Initiative, which you'll be able to find on the website, which is how we have identified making Rider affordable and reduced our tuition. 
and I will put in the chat how to stay in contact with us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And again, my constant reminder to all of the attendees, use the Q&A button to ask questions of any of our six representatives from the schools that uh, they represent. And uh, if it's for a specific school, just make sure to name the school in your question. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from Rutgers University, New Brunswick. All right, start my time. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Jenny Ent, I'm an Associate Director of Recruitment and Outreach here at Rutgers University in New Brunswick. So let's go ahead and jump on in. So here at Rutgers, we are a big institution. Um, we are the flagship public institution in New Jersey. We have about 36,000 undergraduate students. If you add in our grad students as well, it's up to about 50,000. So definitely a big place. Um, but with that comes a lot of really great opportunities. We have over 100 different undergraduate majors here. I'm gonna be going through a few of them in just a moment. And you'll see at the bottom, 175 different research centers and institutes. This is something I always like to point out for our STEM students in particular, since our students can really get involved in research right away. We actually have courses that are held specifically for our first year students. You can take one in your very first semester, and it's going to allow you to get that experience right from the beginning. You're not gonna to have to wait until you're a junior or perhaps even a senior to start, to start doing some of these research projects. Um, other things that I do like to point out as well, just in terms of health professions, if you're interested in studying those, um, we do have nursing, we have pharmacy, and we are ranked very, very highly for those as well. Last thing I always love to pull out, um, just the sheer number of students who are first generation coming into Rutgers. I know it's not necessarily a STEM related thing, but I think it's something that's really integral to who we are here at Rutgers and something that I do always like to point out. So in terms of our academics, we are split up into several different academic schools. The ones that you see there in red are the schools you can apply into as a first year student. And most of these are going to have, oops, sorry, I have a miniature Scarlet Knight here. Um, most of these actually do have STEM majors in them. So we're gonna talk about arts and sciences, engineering and environmental and biological sciences in just a moment. But I do wanna to touch on um, pharmacy and nursing since I don't actually have slides on our health professions within this presentation. The School of Pharmacy is a six year doctoral program, which means that you can come in as a first year student um, and actually be admitted into a doctoral program. So it's a really great way to save both time and money if you're interested in the pharmacy field. We do also have a four-year Bachelor of Science in Nursing program that is direct admit, which means that you won't need to take any additional steps. Once you're admitted in as a first-year student, you are in the nursing program. For our School of Engineering, so as you can see, we have quite a few different majors in here. Um, we have 10 primary majors within the School of Engineering. Um, aerospace is actually one of our, our newest. You'll see it down there at the bottom with mechanical. Yeah. One of the things that's really great with engineering here at Rutgers is just how very hands-on it is. Um, we actually have a brand new engineering building. It opened in fall of 2019. So the pictures that you're seeing here, um, the one to the left with the, the yellow contraption there, and then the one in the bottom right, those are both from the Richard Weeks Hall of Engineering. Um, and the one in the top right is our, our chemical engineering, um, which is actually slated to be renovated in the next few years as well. So really good opportunities to get your hands dirty within the engineering majors. Arts and Sciences actually has over 70 different majors. I pulled just a few, some of our more popular STEM majors within this school. Um, currently, Computer Science is very, very popular. It's one of our most popular majors for incoming first year students. And then it is in our School of Arts and Sciences. You're also going to have your mathematics majors, statistics, as well as biology, chemistry, things along those lines as well. Um, exercise science is also very, very popular. Um, I know I mentioned nursing and pharmacy, but we do also have um, our um, physical therapy program as well, um, which many of our exercise science students are moving into after their undergraduate work. And then our School of Environmental and Biological Sciences. I always like to touch on this one because I think it has a lot of really interesting majors that many students don't even necessarily realize that they can major in. So it does have biology and environmental science as you may have imagined, um, but we also have other things like animal science. Um, you'll see here, we actually have an entire farm on campus. We have horses, cows, sheep, pigs that our students are actually working with. If you're interested in going on to veterinary school, this is a wonderful experience. You're going to be able to work with animals during your undergraduate career, which is actually pretty rare. 
We also have programs like marine science. Um, our students help to develop a drone that can both swim and fly as part of that program, which I think is absolutely amazing. Um, other things like entomology, study of bugs, landscape architecture. So I always like to call this one out because there are a lot of really, really great majors in this program. And then lastly, just in terms of how to apply to Rutgers, how to get here. We do accept the coalition application as well as the Rutgers application. Um, one thing that's a little bit different, instead of taking um, high school transcripts, we do the self-reported academic record where you would enter your grades and your courses into an online system. Um, similar to other schools, we are test optional. Um, we are confirmed test optional for 2022. Um, if you would like to send in your SAT or ACT scores, you are welcome to do so. I am very serious when I say it will not negatively affect you if you decide not to submit them. Um, we do have merit-based scholarships and you will still be considered even if you're not submitting test scores. You can also apply into all of those academic schools that I just mentioned without test scores as well. So please know it's not going to negatively affect you. We do have an application fee of $70, but I also like to mention we do take fee waivers as well. We have NACAC, College Board, um, ACT fee waivers, any of those. If the $70 application fee is going to be a burden for you in any way, please let us know. We really do want to make sure that $70 is not the reason that a student can't come to Rutgers ultimately. And then lastly, because I know I'm running out of time, um, application due dates. So November 1 is our early action. It's not early decision, it's non-binding. Um, and our students will know their admissions decision by February 15th. December 1 is our regular decision due date. Students will know by the end of March. December 1 is also the hard deadline for merit-based scholarships and honors college consideration. So while we do accept applications after that date, we do encourage you to get it on, get it in by that date so that we can fully consider you for all of those opportunities as well. And I think I'm at my time. Thank you guys so much for being here tonight. Um, we're happy to answer any questions you have and I will pass it on over. Thank you so very much. And again, um, I know I sound like a recording, but I wanna remind everyone, just ask questions using the Q&A button, ask of any of our presenters for any of our schools. And if it's a specific question for one or multiple schools, just name them in your question. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from State University of New York, New Paltz. All right, um, so good evening, everyone. My name is Jorge Arazo. I am one of the assistant directors for freshman admission here at SUNY New Paltz. Um, so SUNY New Paltz is part of the SUNY system, which is just stands for State University of New York. We are essentially the public system for New York State. So we are one of 64 institutions. We are one of the college centers, not university centers. Uh, the main difference between those, if you're looking at other SUNY schools, is that the university centers just offer a higher level of program. So they can go up to the PhD level, whereas for us at SUNY New Paltz, you can earn up to your master's here at New Paltz. Um, so before I get started talking about the School of Science and Engineering, just a few things about us. New Paltz is, SUNY New Paltz is located in New Paltz, which is in the Mid-Hudson Valley, um, not too terribly far, especially if you're from Northern New Jersey. Um, I actually used to be the New Jersey representative. Um, so if, uh, if I ever met you at a fair when you were younger, it was probably me. Right now we have another representative, so I will be sure to send her contact information as well as mine if anybody needs it. Um, so SUNY New Paltz is a traditionally liberal arts college that has a student population of roughly around 6,000 total undergraduate students on campus. Um, all of our students, their majors are split up between five different schools. Uh, I'm here to talk about the School of Science and Engineering which I am always very happy to talk about because I actually am an alumni of this specific school here at New Paltz. Um, so I'm just gonna do a quick run through. I don't have a PowerPoint presentation, so I figured I would just show you our website instead so you can get a better sense of what exactly um, you know, you'd be looking at when you're navigating our site. Um, so for our School of Science and Engineering, we are very proud that it is our quickest growing school on our campus. Just even in my time here at New Paltz and now currently working here, um, I've been here about seven years in total and just the growth that the School of Science and Engineering has experienced on our campus is just outstanding. Um, we have built, in my, in my time here, we've built about two new um, buildings dedicated to just engineering and to some of our science programs as well, as well as renovating one of our buildings, Wooster Hall. Um, so that it is more appropriately spaced for a lot of not only our science programs, but also some of our liberal arts and science programs as well. 
So I'm just going to do a quick rundown of our programs here. Um, so we're starting with biology. We have a lot of different concentrations for our majors. So, you know, if you come up to me and say that you're interested in biology, I'm gonna ask you, well, what do you mean by that? Because we have different fields and different offerings. So there's cellular, environmental, integrative, organismal, there's general biology, and then there's obviously all of the degrees related to you know, teaching biology and there are different levels. So if you wanna do childhood or adolescent education, you wanna get your master's in education as well for biology, that's certainly an option. Next after that, we do have biochemistry, which you know, unsurprisingly is a combination of biology and chemistry. Chemistry, again, the same thing where we have different concentrations. So there's the general chemistry. Again, biochemistry is listed under there. And there are different tracks for chemistry. So again, there's general, there's the ACS, which is the American Chemist Society, I believe. Um, computer science, same thing, but that can also be a Bachelor of Arts, a Bachelor of Science, and the master's program that we have. Engineering tends to be our quickest growing program within our School of Science and Engineering, especially the mechanical engineering program. For all of our engineering programs, it's actually a program that we need you to have committed to before you even get started here at New Pulse. And the reason being is because we wanna make sure all of our students are able to take all the appropriate credits in the four years that they're given. Keep in mind with our engineering programs, there's also a huge senior design project that actually will take place during your senior year in two different facets, if you will. So for your first semester of your senior year, there's the whole design and planning and conceptual phase that you're figuring out. Whereas in the second semester of your senior year, so your final semester here at New Paltz, that's kind of the whole production and you know testing and different facets like that. And that actually culminates in a whole senior design expo where all of our students uh, who are seniors in their final year are able to give presentations for their projects. Um, they are collaborative as well, so it's not like you're just doing this project on your own. We try to simulate the real world experiences that you're going to be getting out there in the quote unquote real world. So for example, you know, if you decide to be a computer engineer, you'll be um, collaborating with another electrical, another mechanical engineer, maybe another computer engineer to really, you know, make it a true team collaborative effort for your senior design project. Um, keeping on with our list though, we do have environmental science and this list is kind of a little outdated um, because we actually have recently announced that we are, not, we are creating a new major that is strictly just focused on environmental studies and environmental science. But here we also do offer environmental geochemical science, which is another more science-based approach to you know, environmental studies if anyone was interested. Going on from there, Geology, again, there's environmental geoscience and then just the general geology. And again, education, again, if you wanna teach science, there's the earth science concentration. My personal favorite within the School of Science and Engineering uh, is the math department, because again, I am an alumni of that specific department. And again, it's a bachelor and a master's program. So again, with all of these programs, it's fantastic that you can start your bachelor's here, finish that, and then continue on into the master's program and really kind of have that seamless transition, not worry about having to adapt to a different school if you don't want to, or if you're someone like me who ends up just falling in love with New Paltz and not wanting to leave. Um, so for math, there are concentrations in pure mathematics, actuarial mathematics, and computer science. Again, concentrations for education as well. And lastly, for physics and astronomy, um, those are programs that are very closely tied to each other. And in terms of just applying to these programs, just know that when you apply to them, you will declare for these majors officially once you are already a student here. So we don't consider those majors when you're applying to New Pulse. But I'll be sure to send both of these links in the chat to everyone if you want to take a further look at it. And I'll be sure to send my contact information as well. But I believe that's all the time I have. So thank you guys again. Thank you very much. And there's still time for questions. If you've got any of any of our presenters, just use the Q&A button to ask your question. If it's for a specific school, name the school in your question. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from Ramapo College of New Jersey. Hello, my name is Kelly Duran. It is a pleasure to be able to virtually meet everyone. And so get started with probably the most important things to know about Ramapo is where we're located. So we're in Northern Bergen County up in Mawa, New Jersey. We're a relatively large campus. We're about 300 acres altogether. We're relatively suburban, as you can see from this really nice aerial shot, a lot of nature, a lot of trees, a lot of greenery around campus. 
Right in the middle here is our huge academic complex that is all interconnected wings. And then we're also about 45 minutes away from New York City. And then we're about five minutes away from the New York State border as well. Um, we are also the smallest public school in New Jersey. So we have 6,000 students all together. Student to teacher ratio, 16 to one. Average class size, 21. Largest class you'll ever have is 35. So really focus, small class sizes, individualized attention, really getting to know classmates and faculty, no teaching assistants, no graduate assistants, and no lecture hall courses anywhere on campus as well. And then also here is a list of all of our STEM programs. Um, the most popular one, is especially for students, is our biology, computer science, and then also our nursing programs as well. All of these STEM majors are also test optional. We are test optional as of fall 2021, and we are also test optional for fall of 2022. So for all of these programs, do not have to submit standardized testing scores. However, we do have a handful of programs that are joint and articulated programs that we have partnerships with other schools. And so for these programs, these are the only ones that do require students to be able to submit SAT or ACT scores. And also for most of these programs, they're also an accelerated program as opposed to all the other ones, which are a four-year program. Some of these are either also a four-year program or some of them are only a three-year undergraduate program. Um, so if you do have more questions about that, you can definitely be able to ask. And then also we do have three different graduate programs as well for students to be able to do in STEM. Uh, so the first one is our data science. So students can be able to pair that with any four of our majors in undergraduate. So bioinformatics, computer science, data science, or mathematics. So they can be able to do a combined five-year bachelor's and master's program. New this year is also our first doctoral program. So our doctor of nursing practice. And then also we have three nursing master's programs for students to be able to do. So nursing education, administration, and family nurse practitioner as well. And then besides just academics, we also have a college honors program. So it's for students who are currently taking their honors, AP courses, IB courses, want to continue to be able to take similar courses when they're in college. All first year students get put into development groups. So they're small groups led by two upperclassmen to be able to get to know the other first year class. You work on community service and civic engagement projects. There's also a senior research project as well. Um, a lot of our students in our science majors are pretty interested in the honors program, especially. Also, you'll work with our Cahill Career and Development Center. So we have about a thousand internships in New York City alone, about 10,000 all throughout New Jersey. Typically, we have about 500 employers visit campus annually each year, and then also all of our students are put into a pathways program. So it is going to be specifically an academic advisor who works with you resume interview workshopping skills. Also, when you're applying for internships or shadowing experiences or whatever that's going to look like. Typically, most of our students will do at least either two either internships research experiences or shadowing experiences before they graduate from Ramapo as well. It's one of the big parts, especially of our education is getting to be able to get you involved in the field and studying what you're actually interested in. And then also we have a pretty active intern and study abroad program for students, especially in STEM. So we go to about 500 different programs in 60 different countries. They can range anywhere from a week long program to a year long program. Most popular time those students will go is typically the summer, which is only about a five week program. Also all together, we have 24 different sororities and fraternities on campus, 120 different student clubs organizations, academic, social, community service space, a little bit of everything. There's 31 different professional honor societies that are more academic based, 150 different volunteer opportunities. We have 18 division three athletic teams as well, and then about 30 different leadership programs for students to be able to get involved in. And then pretty important too is living on campus. We're ranked number one in the state of New Jersey for our residence halls by niche.com, which is something we're pretty prideful of. These three that are over here on the left, Pine, Mackin, and Bishop Hall are all of our first year residence halls. And then the four that are over here on the right are all for upperclassmen. So big things, everything is suite style. So you're never sharing a bathroom on the floor of people, only specifically with the people that you're gonna be living with. And then also you're allowed to have your car on campus all four years, housing is guaranteed all four years. And also there's free laundry, heat and AC in all of our residence halls as well. And then otherwise for our 
sophomores and or juniors who are in the room. Um, here is all of our application deadlines. So we have early decision, early action, and regular decision. And then also the days that you'll be getting notified of your decisions for us. The STAR also is priority deadline for December 15th for our nursing, biology applicants, and then also any students who want to be eligible for scholarship consideration as well. Everything you need for the application, pretty self-explanatory, an application, either the Rampo College application, which is a little bit shorter than the Common App or the Coalition. Um, I normally recommend that only to students who are really only interested in Ramapo. Otherwise, Common App and Coalition are definitely the most popular. Um, and then also your high school transcript. Here's kind of our average GPA. We only require one letter recommendation, but always recommend students submit at least two. And then also your college essay. And then also, I can tell you all these great things about Rampo. How much does it cost? So here is tuition and fees for out of state. And then also our two different scholarship opportunities. So presidential and dean scholarships. As I mentioned, SAT or ACT scores are not required for scholarship consideration earlier. Also the deadlines for financial aid. And then otherwise, thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you very much. And I um, wanna thank each of our uh, presenters from each of our schools. And I would like to invite uh, each of them to come back on video and turn on their audio. We'll do a quick little, um, a uh, quick Q and A session here as I am trying to make sure that when I share my screen, the right screen sh shares. So we'll do a quick Q&A. We'll go in round robin format and uh, the same uh, order that uh, you presented and we can give some information. And the first question we have, and we'll probably only have time for this question, but what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we will start with Stevenson University. Um, I think my biggest piece of advice is to take advantage of all the different virtual opportunities that there are um, right now at all these different schools, um, especially for schools that are out of state, because if there is a school you might not have had the time to visit um, in a pre pandemic world, um, you now have plenty of opportunities to engage with them. So definitely uh, keep an eye out for all those virtual open houses and preview days and things like that. Excellent. Uh, Widener University. Um try to be pragmatic about the process. Um, you know, visit, do virtual visits, check out the website, really try to figure out what's important to you. Um, you know, there's a lot of great institutions here tonight. Um, do you want to be close to home, far away from home, in-state, out-of-state, uh, a drive home, a plane ride home? You know, there's schools throughout the world you can go to as well. So really try to figure out what's important to you um, and your family, try to make it an affordable option for you as well. And obviously you, know, you wanna to try to find a college that has your, your major as well. Ryder University. Thank you. Um, I couldn't agree more with the other two. I would say visit for sure, um, whether it's virtual or if you're comfortable and we're offering on-campus visits like we are currently, but with obviously travel restrictions set up by the governor, take advantage of that, but also be open um, there might be schools out there that you weren't necessarily thinking about or hadn't heard of before um, that after a presentation like this or others that may spark your interest. So just be open to the opportunity that there's going to be a wonderful fit for you at some school. And it may just not be a school that you're currently familiar with. So doing a little research and, and finding that diamond in the rough um, might just be out there for you and that it, it will be okay. So ask us what we can help with. Connect with us. That's what we're here for. Rutgers University, New Brunswick. I would say to make sure that you're applying for all financial aid that you may be eligible for. So definitely complete that FAFSA. Um, but New Jersey residents also have the New Jersey Alternative Financial Aid application as well. So if you're a Dreamer or a DACA student, make sure that you're filling that out. You may be eligible for in-state tuition. You may be eligible for state aid as well. Um, and then just be aware of any other financial aid applications that the school might have. So some schools use the CSS profile, for example, or may have their own financial aid applications. You don't want to miss out on some sort of financial just because you didn't fill out the application. SUNY New Paltz. Uh, I really want to echo the sentiments of taking advantage of all of the virtual offerings that all the schools you're interested in are offering. 
Uh, I'm sure all my colleagues here agree that, you know, we've been bending over backwards trying to make as many virtual events something new and different and fun and interesting and engaging for all these students. So we really appreciate and like to see students attending those virtual events where it's safe to do so. Obviously take advantage of those in-person events. If you can take a private campus tour, obviously take advantage of that. But really also just get to know your counselor for your area, for your region, for your territory, whatever the school may call it. Um, because sometimes that might be the exact person who's going to receive your application in their folder. Um, so really get to know them, really put as much of your heart and interest in those schools um, and just have fun doing all of this. Last but not least, Ramapo College of New Jersey. Um, my biggest piece of advice is this is your process. This is not who your aunt or your cousin or whoever told you you need to apply or you need to look into this school. Maybe you're really interested in a small liberal arts school, or you really want to be able to go to a large school, or you want to be in a, sub a suburban school or an urban school, really also sit down with yourself and be able to figure out, here's where I'm going to thrive, and ultimately this is going to be the best experience that I am going to be able to have. Because at the end of the day, counseling is all in our titles, and that's what we want, is we want you to have your best experience more than anything else, more than I want you to say, yes, of course I wanna to come to Rampo. That's great, but I want you to be happy at the end of the day. And also most important, have a very honest conversation with your family about your finances and what schools are also going to make sense for you as well then too. So that you don't have your heart set on a dream school and financially it's not going to be able to work. Excellent advice from everyone. And I wanna thank everyone, not just for those pieces of advice, but for presenting during this session today. And I wanna thank all of you for joining us. When you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. Be sure to sign up for additional ones where you signed up for this one. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's record recording as well as all of the other session recordings once again at the same place you signed up for this session. Want again, thank you to all of our presenters and wanna uh, wish you all a great Tuesday evening. Thank you and take care.